The Sanitar is the new drug fueled scav boss of the shoreline map, and in this video I'm going to be diving deep just like with every other scav boss and giving you the best ways to kill them and to get your hands on their sweet loot. Believe me when I say this, killing the Sanitar isn't always an easy task, just like a real druggie he lurks and waits for you. Just until you think you're safe and well, Tarkov turns into a horror game. Oh my god, flipping heck, you scare me so much, go away! Just like normal, we're first going to talk about where the Sanator can be located, which is throughout many points of the shoreline map, the most common of which, in my experience, is the resort, and more specifically on the ground floor of the east and west wings. This boss sticks around the medical rooms close to the middle staircase and patrols both the short and the longer hallways, where he will be hiding in a room waiting for a PMC to walk by, and then all of a sudden you get shot to shit. Other than the resort, he's also located in the pier down at the bottom of the map by a gas station. He'll usually appear outside when he's not aggroed on a PMC or a scav, and from here he'll patrol to the arse end of the shore, onto the beach close to the lighthouse. And when he becomes aggroed on a player, he'll push inside of buildings within the pier area to get cover and heal. And finally, he's also located at the villas just outside the village area in the middle of the map. Since they have added many more breaks in the fence, he'll patrol all the way between both of the cottages, spending the majority of his time in the gardens checking on his crops. Even though he doesn't go into the two cottages, don't think this is going to be an easy task killing him just because he's out in the open. He has plenty of bushes to hide in and plenty of crates to hide behind to give him a couple of seconds in order to heal before re-engaging. When you see the senator for the first time, you'll notice that he isn't alone. This bloke has two heavily armed bodyguards sticking close by him, and they'll have unique mannerisms for a scav boss. Whereas every other scav boss with bodyguards, the bodyguards are aggressive and they push you while the actual scav boss remains in cover. This one, none of them really push you. In fact, they will shoot you on sight and be deadly accurate, and then hold that angle for a pretty good degree, so when you push and peek again, they'll get shots on you pretty quickly. And when you engage them, either by shooting or throwing a grenade in their direction, they will run the opposite way and get into cover. This is the case for the scav boss and the bodyguards. But this is completely intentional. They all carry a metric shit ton of meds, so when they're running away, that means they're going to heal. Keep letting them do that and you'll be stuck in a firefight for a really prolonged period of time, meaning it gives other players a chance to come and third party the end of your confrontation. The Senator and his bodyguards all have increased health, just like every other scav boss, meaning he's going to tank a couple of headshots even with the more powerful ammo types. Along with increased health, they have an arsenal of weapons and armor. More so the bodyguards, but the Senator himself has a couple of decent weapons with high powered ammos in his arsenal too. If you watched the 12.7 trailer, you would have seen the Sanator carrying an OPSKS Morad, specifically though, the Fab Defense variant. This weapon is one of his favourite to use in game as well, with 762 BP ammunition chambered. But he doesn't just carry that, he carries a VSS with a Valde scope and 30 round magazines for this weapon as well. And I have seen a ton of different ammunition types, for example he can have SPP, SP6 and BP ammunition, and they are all ammunitions that really pepper my ball bags when he decides to have a VSS. He can also use a suppressed Kedder with SP7 ammunition combined with a sidearm of an APS pistol, however I've not really ever seen him use the pistol, just the Kedder. He doesn't have much else in his arsenal apart from his medical bag which is known as the Sanator's bag and a couple of grenades. His medical bag obviously contains meds but also a new variation of key too, a key card with blue markings and a tape key, and at the end of this video I'll briefly go over what each of these keys do, the locations and what they unlock and what you can find inside these locked rooms. The bodyguards have much more weapons and a variation of up to class 5 armors which they can use. Their weapons range from a Saiga 12 gauge with 20 round power mags containing Superformance slugs and AP20 slugs, all the way down to an AKS 74UB packing 7M39 ammunition. Other than these weapons, they can spawn with Vepa KMs and AKMs containing either 762 BP or T45M Tracer ammunition. Trust me, to avoid getting butt fucked early on in the engagement, you wish they have T45M ammo and I've also seen them spawn with Vepa Hunters with their horrible NPZ USP 4x optic with either Ultra Nozzle Rounds or M993 ammo. The armor they use is actually quite a variation in of itself. They can have in head protection the Sphere S diaper helmet which give them level 3 protection on top of their increased health, an Alton helmet with a face shield which gives them a huge level 5 protection on top of their health, the BNTI LSHZ along with the compatible face shield giving level 4 protection, and also the ZSH and the Striker AC HHC which also give level 4 protection. The body armor which they use is definitely not something to overlook either, as it will give them all level 5 protection. 
You'll see them a lot of the time wearing Defender 4 armors and Fort Reader M body armors, but you can also see them with Gazelle armors too. All of these armors are very strong and combine that with their accuracy and their ability to heal frequently, these guards and the Sanator himself are quite challenging to take care of. Now that we've gone over where you can find them and what you can expect when you do find them, now let's talk about how to take them out. Firstly, because of their increased health, you want to bring a weapon capable of massive damage. High caliber weapons with strong ammo types are your best bet. Usually I take an M1A, SKS or AKM with 7.62 BP ammunition. And since it's mainly about ammo, you could also take a high powered M4 with the good 5.56 ammos like M855A1 or M995, or you can take a 5.45 AK variant with BS or 7M39. That is probably your better bets if you do want to take out the scav boss. Of course you can use a Mosin or a Vepa Hunter to also deal massive damage, but the thing that you have to remember with those weapons is the rate of fire and magazine capacity. You need to be extremely accurate and keep your eyes on the target the whole time to avoid them breaking off from their patrol to heal again, and you'll be using a lot of ammunition regardless. I was using a nice little CQB M4 with M855A1 ammunition, and even then I was burning through mags and reserve ammo really quickly, hitting them um, either in the head or center mass the whole time. And this is probably the only scav boss where I'd say this, but taking them out at range will actually be harder than just going in and being quite aggressive. It's not impossible, but it'll certainly prolong your firefights even more, and the reason for this is they'll have much more of a chance to get behind some cover and heal up for them to re-peak and engage you again. The main thing is, don't let them get a chance to heal. Keep a constant eye on them and make sure you have a shot on them the majority, if not all the time. If you can stop them from healing, then the firefights will be over a lot quicker than if you didn't. Because of this, I would focus on one enemy at a time, taking out the heavier armed bodyguards first if possible. The reason I say this is because they run a lot less than the Senator does and they have a lot less meds to use. So if you're able to take out the heavier guards first, you'll also be able to pick up their weapons or armor in case you're running low on ammunition or you need better armor to give yourself better protection. Using hardcover and repositioning is always a good idea too. Their accurate, so keeping on the move is also going to aid you in your success, especially when you're either at the villas or on the pier. This ridgeline that overlooks gas station and lighthouse close to the construction area is a great way to get eyes on the scav boss if they're at the pier. You can climb it on top of the rocks to get a good overwatch on the pier, and you'll see a group of three moving around. That'll be the scav boss who'll probably be making his way towards the beach and the lighthouse. As soon as they're on the beach, this is the time and probably the only effective time that you'll be able to take them out at range. They'll have very limited cover and you'll be able to get shots on target before they have shots on you. When they do start returning fire at you though, simply jump behind the rocks and reposition them from a different angle. While you're behind the rocks, they won't be able to hit you, so personally what I would do is jump behind the rocks and flank wide left around past construction, go through construction and into the back of it. You'll be close to the water and you'll get a good view down to the shore and the light house and you'll be able to see into somewhat of the pier so you'll be able to see a good idea on where the sanitor and his bodyguards are. And of course if this is not your style and you'd rather go M4 full auto then I would go down the pier but rather than going through the entrance to the pier, break a right and then walk around the blue fence. And then the blue fence used to have a hole in the bottom so you could shoot people's feet, that's gone now, that fence goes all the way to the ground. So then go straight ahead and you'll be in a dip with two stairways underneath, you'll be able to hear them running around and then you'll be able to shoot one by one until you bring people down and you'll be able to locate the senator even hiding in the boathouse or other side of the other blue fence to you on the beach. Other than this location there's plenty of hard cover in which you can use in the villas and the resort. In the resort you simply use the rooms and peek from a doorway before moving to another open room. In this location I haven't noticed them using grenades often, so they don't push the rooms either when you run in, so slowly peeking and taking note of any flashlights that you can see will give you a good indication on where they are. Again, start with the bodyguards and get some good shots on them before you move. You'll notice that the bodyguards will run into other rooms too, so if they do and you notice the hallway is clear, bring some grenades and chuck them into the rooms to flush them out, and then either the grenade to get them, or you can spray some of your high powered rounds into them as they run out. The villa exteriors also have many great places to position yourself and almost everything lying around could be used as some sort of cover. The sheds, the SUVs, the ambulances, even the barrels and wire wheels can be used. The only thing I would say that you should avoid is the bushes and the greenhouses. The greenhouses are pretty obvious, they're made of glass so you'll be able to be seen through them and they would also be able to shoot through them. The bushes as well, they aren't hard cover at all, so scavs have laser vision as always, especially this scav bus. So it's not ideal, they'll see you straight through the bushes and shoot you. Even if they go into a bush and hide, don't mean you're safe by copying them. 
In the villas, I usually base my assault around the villa buildings themselves. If they are on the inside of the fences, using the buildings as cover, I rotate around and peek different angles. And then I can push from other hard cover like the ambulances or the wire wheels to then rotate around the back of the enemy, keeping my eye on a single target at a time. If they're outside of the exterior fences, then you could use the hay bales at the edge of suicide fields as cover, and if they're around the front of the villa fences, you can simply use that dip out the front with that little water pond, and you can use that dip in the low ground to peek your head, shoot, move along, peek your head, shoot, because that ridge goes all the way along the length of the villas. So you'll be able to peek from one angle, then run 20 meters and peek another angle really easily without getting shot at. Honestly, getting up close and personal with a scav boss is probably going to make you succeed a lot more of the time. You get as much cover as possible with a weapon with either powerful ammo and a decent fire rate or decent ammo and extremely fast fire rate like a P90 and that will probably be your best weapon to use. Use grenades and keep pushing and rotating to different angles. Keep an eye on your surroundings and isolate one enemy at a time in order to pick up an alternate weapon and if you run dry on that one you can just throw your weapon on the floor and you'll have another one ready to go. And this tip is pretty much a given in any firefight in Tarkov but it's more prevalent with this scav boss than any other. Check your surroundings really thoroughly. This guy loves to lurk in rooms and the scav AI in general has been improved so even after you've killed them, it's likely that regular scavs will be en route to come and flank you. I do also want you guys to go down in the comment section below and comment your strategies, your experiences with the Sanator. Tell me if you've killed him yet, tell me how often you've died to him, if you've even seen him at all, and then also tell me your tips and tricks that you go about when engaging the scav boss. But now, I'm going to talk about the new key and the new key card that you'll find on the Sanator's body, along with some new stimulants and a grizzly and a CMS kit. The first thing we'll talk about is the key with tape. This has a very similar design to the Kiva key, and it actually opens room 110 in the east wing of the Shoreline Resort. This room can easily be located when you're looking for a door with a handprint to the right hand side of it. When you open it at first, you'll find a small room which at first doesn't look much to meet the eye. But actually there is a lot of possible profit in this room as there is a Ledex spawn on the floor of the bathroom along with a sports bag and additional loose loot. The keycard with blue markings is a keycard that could be used on labs located in block G22 on the second floor of the lab's location. This is on the opposite side of the corridor to the room that is unlocked with a green keycard. Inside this room you'll find some stims and other medical items which could fetch a profit but honestly I'll be continuing to shy away from labs and I'll leave this room for the hackers to fight over. And that's it, not only was this video giving you a good overview on methods that I've adopted on how to kill the Sanator easier, but I've also given you an overview of where to find him, what you get from him and his bodyguards when they spawn, and a brief overview of the new keys that you could possibly get from the Sanator's backpack, but if you do have any questions or additions, like I said earlier, I'd love to hear from you down below in the comments. Let's discuss 12.7 together, we could discuss the good, bad and the ugly, I love having discussions with you guys, but I'll see you down there, other than that, What the fuck are you lot doing? Uh -oh. Am I out of ammo? No. Shut up! So loud, the lot of you. <laughs> oh, you can shut up and all. I'd like to thank you all for staying to the end of this video, and if you did enjoy it, a like is always appreciated. And if you want to stay up to date with all my latest content, then you can hit that little red button below and subscribe to the channel. It really would mean the world to me. 80% of you, according to YouTube's analytics, that watch my videos are not subscribed. So if you do feel like doing it, hit that little red button. It's free, and it makes me feel special. It might even get me rock hard, who knows? And if you want to play with me, or many other people, then hit up the link in the description and join my Discord. There's people there that play Tarkov and many other games. Hit me up, we can play together sometime time too. If you're a fan on how the gameplay looked in this video then that's thanks to the long term sponsor of the channel Shadow. Shadow can turn any PC, tablet, phone or Mac into a high powered gaming PC using cloud gaming. Unlike Stadia or GeForce Now you aren't just paying for a gaming big picture mode, but a Windows desktop client with top of the range hardware located at your local data center. If you have an internet connection of 15 megabytes or more and fancy giving this a go, then click the link in the description it will take you to their website where you can do more research and find out if Shadow is available where you are. 
If you decide to sign up using the code Samosh will give you money off your first month. And once again, thank you for staying to the end of the video. I love every one of you. I'll see you next time. Enjoy your evening.